Hello students, this is part 2 of SQL tutorial for beginners. In previous tutorial, we covered important concepts of SQL. SQL operations like select, project, SQL joins, union and set difference were covered in detail. In this tutorial, aggregate functions, group by class and having class will be covered. Then we will learn about subqueries and nested queries. After watching this video, you will be able to write complex queries of any kind. Our first topic today is aggregate functions. Databases hold lots of raw data in tables. To produce useful information or answer a question, we often need to produce summaries or aggregates over raw data in table. For example, someone can ask average salary of employees in an organization. Someone can ask total amount of sales made today. To answer questions like that, we use aggregate functions, which operates on raw data and summarizes information for us. There are five aggregate functions in SQL. These are AVG, SUM, MIN, MAX, and COUNT. AVG or AVERAGE function computes average of a data column in a table. SUM function is used to calculate total or sum of values or amounts in a column. MIN is used to find minimum value in a column and similarly MAX is used to find maximum value in a column. COUNT function returns the number of rows in a table. COUNT can also be used to count number of values in a column. One important thing to remember is that aggregate functions exclude null values from the columns before computing aggregates. Another important thing to remember is that AVG, SUM, MIN and MAX functions only operate on numeric types of columns. Let's see aggregate functions in action with examples. Here is employee table. It contains salary column. We need to calculate total salary of employees. Here is the select statement to calculate sum of the salary column. Select sum into salary from employee. When this query executes, it returns the sum of salary column which is 8500. Let's calculate average salary of employees in an organization. Select AVG into salary from employee. The output produced from this query is 2833.33. Please note, this query is computing the average based on only three rows. The fourth row is excluded because it contains null in the salary column. We can use more than one aggregate function in a single query. For example, we want to calculate sum, average, minimum and maximum of salary. Here is the select statement for it. Select sum into salary comma, average into salary, comma, minimum into salary, comma, max into salary from employee. Now, let's have a look at count function. It comes in two flavors. When count into asterisk is used, it returns total number of rows, including null rows. For example, if we need to know total number of rows in employee table, we can write, select count into asterisk from employee. When this query is executed, it will output 4, because there are four total rows in employee table. In the second variation, we can pass a column name as argument to the count function. In this case, count function counts number of non-null values in a column. For example, select count into salary from employee. It counts number of values in salary column excluding nulls. So the output of this query will be three because there are three values in salary column excluding nulls. So far, we were using aggregate functions on all rows of a table but we can use WHERE class to provide a condition for rows to be included in the aggregate. For example, we want to calculate sum of salary of employees who belongs to department 1. We can write a query, select sum into salary from employee where department ID is equal to 1. In this way, only records of department 1 employees will be included in the aggregate. Please note, WHERE class is applied before applying the aggregate functions. This point must be remembered. Here is another task to calculate sum of salary of employees in each department. How can we achieve that? One way to achieve that is to write separate select statements for each department and filter the records using WHERE class like we did in the previous example. So if there are three departments, we will have to write three select statements. Please note, results of each select statement will be a different relation. But what if there are dozens of departments? Well, there is a way to write only one SQL select statement and get sums of salaries of each department in a single relation. This is achieved by using group by class we will see in a moment. Group by class of SQL statement is used with aggregate functions. This makes it possible to produce aggregates over a group of rows instead of all rows in a table. For example, we want sum of salary column for each department. In simple words, 
we want to group data based on department ID column. Here is SQL statement in which group by class is used. Select department ID, comma sum into salary from employee, group by department ID. Now look at the output relation generated by this select statement. It contains three rows, one row for each department. Please note, any column included in the group by class can also be included in the select class. So I have used department ID in group by class and it is also included in the select class. In other words, you cannot include a non-aggregate column in select class unless it is mentioned in the group by class. Group by class is optional. It can only be used when one or more aggregate functions are used in select statement. Now consider this query. It is the same query we discussed in the previous example. Output produced from this query is also shown. It produces sum of salary for each department. But now, our task is calculate sum of salary for each department where sum of salary is greater than 1000. When we apply this condition, the third row should be excluded from the final output. We already know we can use conditions with where class. So I have written where class where sum into salary greater than 1000. But this is not going to work because where class is applied before calculating the aggregates. So sum into salary will be unknown when applying the where class. For this simple reason, aggregate functions cannot be used in where class. This is important point to remember. We need to apply the condition only after the aggregates are computed. So the solution is having class. Now look at the query. The condition sum into salary greater than 1000 is provided in the having class and it works fine. Now if you look at the output, only records with the sum of salary greater than 1000 appear. Look at this example. Now the task is to calculate sum of salary for each department where sum of salary is greater than average salary. It means we will have to calculate both average and sum of salary for each department and then filter the records using having class. Note the condition in having class, having sum into salary greater than average into salary. What is difference between having class and where class? This is the most frequently asked question. Where class works on row level of source relation and we cannot use aggregate functions in where class. Having class works on group level. Therefore, use of aggregate functions is allowed. Having class is only used when at least one aggregate function is used in select class. We can use where class and having class in the same select query. So far, we learned important concepts like relational operations, SQL joins and aggregate functions. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about subqueries, which is another important topic to write effective SQL statements. What are subqueries? These are queries within other queries. SQL provides us ways to write SQL queries within other queries. These are called subqueries. We can write queries in a nested manner. A subquery computes results that are then used by the outer query. Basically, a subquery acts like and other expression we have seen so far. Where can we write subqueries? A subquery can be written inside the select class, from class, where class, and having class of SQL statement. You can even nest queries inside another query. We have been using comparison operators in previous examples. Operators are used to create conditions. We have used conditions in where class and having class of SQL statements. Now, I am going to introduce some more logical operators. Some of these are most often used to write subqueries. The in operator is used to compare a value to a list of literal values. It returns true if the value exists in the list. It returns false if the value does not exist in the list. Comma separator list of values is provided in parenthesis after the in keyword. We can also write a subquery inside the in operator instead of comma separated list of values. In this case, subquery results will be treated as list of values to the in operator. Look at this example query. It gets records of departments 1, 2 and 3. The query is select asterisk from employee where department ID is equal to 1 or department ID is equal to 2 
or department ID is equal to 3. There are three conditions used in a VIRA class. These conditions are combined using OR operators. Now look at the second query. It is written using IN operator. Select asterisk from employee where department ID IN into 1, 2, 3. Both of these queries produce the same result. Second query, second query is short and easy to understand. Now, here is our new task. We need to get employee records for departments which belongs to city Houston. After analyzing the problem statement, we can split the main task into two smaller tasks. First step is to get list of department IDs for city Houston. And the second step is to get employee records for departments which were queried in step one. There is a city column in department table. We can write an SQL statement for step one. Select department ID from department where city is equal to Houston. For the second step, we can write select statement using in operator. Select asterisk from employee where department ID in into step one. Step one is written in red color inside the in operator. But unfortunately, in SQL, we cannot refer to other queries like this. Instead, we can move the first query inside the in operator of the second query. And here is the final query. The exist operator is used to search for the presence of row in a specified table that meets certain criteria. In simple words, a subquery is provided to the exist operator. If subquery returns one or more rows, it returns true, otherwise false. Let's see the example query. Select asterisk from employee where exists into select asterisk from ABC. This query will only get employee records when one or more records are returned by the subquery. The all operator is used to compare a value to all values returned by a subquery. For example, select asterisk from employee where department ID greater than all into select department ID from department where department ID less than 3. The subquery returns department ID 1 and 2. The only ID greater than 1 and 2 is 3. So, employee records for department ID 3 are fetched and there is only one record in the employee table for department ID 3. The any and sum operators are used to compare a value to any value returned by a subquery. Any or sum operators have same meaning. There is no difference between them. For example, select asterisk from employee where department ID greater than any into select department ID from department where department ID less than 3. For example, select asterisk from employee where department ID greater than any into select department ID from department where department ID less than 3. The query gets three rows for departments 2 and 3. Records for department 1 are not included in the output. So far, we have written subqueries in where class of select statement. Let's see some more examples. Our task is to list department name and total salary of employees in each department. We are going to solve this problem in simple steps. So our first step is to calculate department-wide salary totals. Here is query. Select department ID comma sum into salary as total salary from employee group by department ID. The result of this query will contain two columns, department ID and total salary. The result relation has no name. Let's assume its name is step 1. Now, we know department name is in the department table and total salary is in the step 1 table. We can join both of these tables together to get the desired results. Please watch the part 1 of SQL video if you do not know about joins. So, here is select statement for the second step. Select department name, comma, total salary from department, left join step 1 on department dot department id is equal to step one dot department id now as a final step i have to move the select statement written in step one as a sub query to the step two query now as a final step i have moved the select statement written in step one as sub query to the step two the sub query is enclosed in braces and is named or aliased as step one it is moved in the left join clause the subquery executes first 
and produces a table in memory which is joined with the outer query to produce the final result. This part of tutorial ends here. Please subscribe to my channel, share and like this video and provide your feedback in the comments section. Please practice more and more. Writing good SQL is art rather than a science. This can only be mastered through practice. Thanks.